Hello! Marios here, and today we're back with the Satara Fighter competition. I'm recording this on a Tuesday instead of a Wednesday, since, well, Wednesday I am not allowed to go on the computer this week. And, if you ask me, it's pretty unfortunate, because Java needs to update. No, um, it's pretty unfortunate because outside it's like 24 degrees Celsius. And I want to just bring you this episode. I mean, it's, it's not like I'm going to do anything outside. I don't like it outside. Anyway, today's match is the Electro versus the Flying Squirrel. And after that, we will have the match of the Angry Koi versus the HC Schanik Mark V C. Now, if you ask me, this very tiny plane, possibly the tiniest in the entire competition, should be able to win this on lock on range. And, well, the Schanik Mark V is not maneuverable enough to win it on lock on range. But before we begin, I would just like to introduce you to our new recruit, Will Win Kerman. Because in the last episode, Jeb unfortunately died. That, don't mind that. <laughs> it's, it's just because I had to set up the flying scroll. Let's start round one. And hope that I quick save that. I, I, I think I didn't quick save that. Well, that's shitty. The HC Electrof is off the path first, followed by the Flying Squirrel. The HC Electrof is currently the biggest craft in the entire competition, sporting a 5km lock-on range. Why do I say this? Well, I'm pretty confident that this is in terms of, well, size. In terms of size, it's the largest. And, uh, well, the Electrof should be easy. To lock on to. As well, of the 5 km locker range. I don't know though if the flying scroll has a 9s or a 120s equipped. I believe it's a 9s. So that should be quite harmful for them since they can't fire first, as far as I know. Well, then we should be engaging right about now. Well, um, yes. And that, that looks like a failure for a flying squirrel. <laughs> a failure to um, adapt for a proper lock on range. Because the HC Electro have got a missile off. It doesn't matter though. The HC Electros get annihilated by the flying squirrels pretty quickly. And this is what should have been expected. Since a flying squirrel is more maneuverable. And that's what we are going to see today in this episode. The maneuverability advantage. It's pretty much a lesson of the maneuverability advantage, by the way. Yeah, it, it, it did remember my weapon volume settings. That's nice. Now. Yeah, I've just fucked myself. I pressed F5 instead of F9. Ah, oh, fuck me. Well, that's technical difficulties. So, with that quick technical difficulty out of the way, it's time to see how the flying scroll won that one. Because, to be honest, I think this is another 3 nil battle. Because the HC Electrof is bad. <laughs> but, um, we'll see. If the HC Electrof made it past round 1, I mean, it's, it sure would be surprising if it didn't, since, well, it won its uh, pre-season round, its preview round, its flight test round, however you want to call it round. So, yeah, it, it would surely be interesting to see the HC Electrof lose this one and go out at round 1. But hey, it's happened to me before. The, um, the Forma Mark 1, the Forma Mark 1, uh, bottled it after winning its flight test. Eh, can't do anything about that. Oh well, 
the flying scroll is turning and about to engage the HC Electroth. More waiting ensues as we wait until it engages. By the way, do you want to see Minecraft Velocity SMP Season 2 videos or not? Please vote in that i-card showing right now. So, the A9s are engaging now. Come on, fire! Fire, fire! Please! The Electro's weakness is the A9! Oh! But the A120 sure is damaging to the Flying Squirrel. Oh! That must have hurt! Ah, oh, well, must... Uh, not have hurt as badly as Bill, Bob and Valentina who crashed to the ground. Also Bill win. He died on his first mission. And they all crashed into the ground trying to um, set this thing up again. Oh no, it, it, it's not, it does not want to engage that Electroff. It's going to pay for that. It, it, it's not wanting to engage Electros. It's going to pay for that. I can guarantee you. Yep. <clears throat> well then, Sebastian Vettel. Oh, Kermit. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it appears as though you have uh, gotten yourself into a precarious situation. And you must be recovered by Jetpack. And if you cannot be recovered by Jetpack, well, I, um, I wish you well. So, that's 1-1 one, one for the HC Electroth. It appears as though an A120 can very easily defeat a Flying Squirrel, but not uh, a Samurai Sled. A Samurai Sled is beaten. But the Flying Squirrel can be beaten as Sebastian Vettel falls to, its de to his death, and the other one did too. I'm f I'm so sorry, Sebastian, and the other one. The, this is Erwin and Stelok, I think. Yes, Erwin and Stelok. Now, who are you? This is Lopond. Lopond Kerman. You can't make this up. Well, of course, it's a it's a random gener name generator that's making this up. Anyway. It's time for the third round as the HC Electroth takes off. And we of course have to wait on the Flying Squirrels showing us debris. Please, Flying Squirrels. Ah oh well, no complaints. They can take off at least. I've had planes do otherwise. Such as the HC Drone Lag or the HC Charmander Mark 8. They crashed into the ground in their respective C CFC Season 1 battles. Which you can also find in the icons right now. One after the other, of course. Because you can't show two things at once in the icons. That would be way too inefficient. So just about now, you should see the second one. The second video. Of course, I've placed them in chronological order. You can assume that. So, you can clearly see the maneuverability disadvantage of the HC Electroth really, really struggling to get turned to engage the Flying Squirrel. It should be happening right about now, because we are in 5 km local. Come on there! Oh! It's actually being engaged first this time, it cannot get a missile off. This one can't get a missile off. Oh no! Oh no! So, um, Electroth down. Both the Electroths are down on A9 missile hits. What did I say? It's very, very weak against A9s. But at least this Electroth is still flying. And it's, it's severely, severely hampered its maneuverability simply because, well, it does not have its thingy anymore. It's um, it's stick and it's in the dog's mouth. It's gone. By the way, how are these engines still functioning despite there being no intakes? I would like to know that. Because it's it's like very... Oh no, there. 
No, that thing takes blood off too. Oh, there, no. Yeah, yeah, see, that, that clipped intake is still there. Uh, uh, yes, I clipped that intake, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Oh no, it's... I mean, I'm going to be very surprised if this very, very damaged HC Electroff can do anything against Flying Squirrels. It just can't. It couldn't. So that's 2-1 for the Flying Squirrel. And I've got to say, it's surprising to me that the HC Electroff even won one. And, well, it's, this one seems another... Ex this one seems to be... Another example of the camera advantage, or rather the camera disadvantage, because every time I switch to the craft, such as the flying squirrel, here in this fourth round example, it gets killed. I mean, H and Electroff, they both got killed. And then the round before that, the flying squirrels, they both got killed. I mean, if that doesn't confirm the camera disadvantage, that I talked about in the last episode, then I don't know either. I mean, how? How does that not confirm the camera disadvantage rule that I just established in the last episode? Because sometimes it just occurs and other times it doesn't. Coincidence? I think not. As the competition starts again, now, if you ask me, the Flying Squirrel's secret are these giant, utterly giant ass, big ass actually, elephants, while I'm only using the tiniest ones. I mean, it, it's, it sure does seem very obvious that that's the advantage, and, and these four things too which apparently don't function at air brakes that well. Um, Electro, please dodge. Now I can see that hitting from a mile away. Oh, 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 no! <laughs> Flying squirrel, you need to get better at dodging aim 120s. So, um, HG Electro, no. No, this is dead. This is so very dead. Yeah. It, it just lost a panther, and it's very unstable. Yeah. So, the flying screw will... What was that? I swear it was just Electro debris getting shot up, shot up by the flying squirrel. I, ho I certainly do hope so, and it does look like it. Well, it, the flying squirrel will move on at the cost of the HC Electro. Well done, Fan Jerry. You showed us today that you are able to win a match despite not having like the, the, the shrouded engine thing that completely hampers an AIM-9 from working. But I, I gotta admit though, it's, it's so very easy to take down an Electroff. I mean, you've, you've seen the weakness. It's not very maneuverable. While the Flying Squirrel is maneuverability OP, OP, please, nerve. It's just obvious. But as soon as this Flying Squirrel will face craft that send in two missiles at a time, I do predict that this will struggle. I cannot see this one not struggling under those circumstances. It would really surprise me. And as well, even in this battle where the Flying Squirrel won, one got taken out by a missile, and to be honest, the Electroff just bottled its uh, aim 9 missile dodging right there. I mean, it's so shameful. That's why I never use that configuration for... <coughs> for countermeasures ever again, because it's so, so goddamn bad. But it doesn't matter. The Flying Squirrel went for 3-1, although there's certainly a weakness to be exploited. We'll see in round 2 if we'll get exploited, or maybe 
if it will even get to the finals. Which, if you ask me, would be a surprise. Because it got taken out the first, and it's round. It all doesn't matter though, because this battle is an old drone one. And this one, the HC Sanic Mark 5C, has only a 2 km lock on range, which should provide an advantage over the angry Koi in the initial encounter. But just as a side note, the, the Sanic will have to obliterate the angry koi in the initial encounter because if it doesn't the angry koi maneuvers behind it on its back and will blast the HC Schanik Mark 5C out of the air because the maneuverability on the HC Schanik is completely useless now that that's out of the way a quick F5 and a quick click of the button will prove if my predictions are correct. Which hopefully they are. Because well, um, I hope the Schanik obliterates the angry koi simply just for the fun, for the lols, and to demonstrate the OPness of a tiny lock bridge. Because the Schanik, I'll just say it again, has just a 2 km lock on range. This will be a slow battle to start up, because all the contestants are using Juno engines. No Panthers, no Weasleys, no Goliaths. Only Junos are used. At least, that's what I think. Yep, only Junos. And I know the Schanik has only Junos. It's a very long time to wait though, until we can finally start this competition. Which right on cue it does. And no change of the noise this time because there are no Panzer engines. Which makes this, this fight rather calming to listen to. By the way, what's that Schanik doing? Why are you not turning? Why the fuck are you not turning? Well, um, it seems like they have lock-ons. So, um, Schanik will lose. The Schanik will certainly lose this one. Gunfire on the other Schanik. It, it won't survive this. Yep. And it won't survive this. It's a tiny plane. But a tiny plane is not what AVG wants apparently. A tiny plane is not everything. That's also something to be thinking about. Also, AVG, fuck off. Don't ruin, don't ruin my fucking recording session, honestly. AVG, get out the door, fuck off. I do not like you, I do not want you here, and I would certainly like it if you stop getting, my, getting me out of this fucking window. Oh. The HG Schanik Mark V managed to land. Doesn't matter though, this Schanik is way too low to engage the Angry Koi before the Angry Koi is launching missiles. Because apparently, this could lock on. Um, no, no, Schanik, you're not going to do this. Yes. Exactly, Schanik. Although I have to admit, the Angry Koi is very lucky that the Schanik has such a compressed... such compressed... Um, guns. Oh, that's very funny. Because, well... 
it, it certainly does have the advantage for the angry koi. Because, well, um, it's very obvious that that compressed, those compressed guns cannot hit anything. And that's again another mistake I made with the Schanik Mark V. I have to admit, it's just, it's a dumb mistake. As I said though, I'll be surprised if the Schanik even gets one kill on the angry coins. As we start the second round. So, just a quick discussion, a quick question again in the polls, in the icons. Should I scrap the recording or cut out the bits? Their AVG is, complete, is a complete and utter piece of shit. Please vote now. Yes, um, I am of the opinion that I shouldn't because it interrupts my commentary. Since this is, of course, a live call. And it, it also disrupts the flow of the video because suddenly the plane that we are on board with teleports. And that's not. That's not something. That's not something we like. We don't want our plane suddenly teleporting to other places. Now, do we? You know, just a quick thought here. If both the Schanix turned around at the beginning, beginning of the battle, would they have stood a chance? Most likely not. Anyway, we are coming up to the start of the battle. Which is happening right now. The other Schanix turning? Yeah, the other Schanix is turning. They feel like engaging. They both feel like engaging, which is good to see. You know, I really should have put a couple of aim-9s on this one. Because the angry coil can just fly straight at the Schanik this time. It um, certainly can't the next time it will face a plane. That's one thing I know for sure. Anyway, this is just a very, very slow battle. Because of course, Junos, no Panthers. AVG, why are you disrupting my recording at a very crucial point because the Schalik is firing and most certainly not doing a great job at it. It does, it is, however, doing a great job at avoiding missiles. I had to say something. Oh, yeah, I, I was really expecting that missile to hit, but apparently, oh, uh, the other Schalik is firing. No, shit, no, 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 that did not, no, no. No! This is this can't be happening! Schanik! Schanik, why are you not disappointing me? That angry coin! No! What? No! The disbelief is real! No, the angry coin is going down! Yes, Schanik! Yes! Yes! Be completely and utterly dominant towards the other towards the angry coin! Yes! <laughs> oh wow! I mean, the durability on the angry koi is certainly insane, but... Come on, man! That was just a nice shot from the Schanik. This other Schanik, however, is going to get taken out with that angry koi. I just know it. I just have a feeling that it will happen. But uh, I just feel like... I feel like just riding on board with this angry koi as it slowly tumbles down. Yeah, that will be the Schanik. Yep. Um, as, um, just, just a question. What did it hit? Nothing. Absolutely nothing of hers. Nice one. Nice one, Angry Koi. Um, Angry Koi, you're getting quite close to the Schanik now and still not hitting. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. So, uh, Schanik. Feel like engaging the other angry koi? It, uh, it, it certainly does look like it. This is very fun to watch. <laughs> if I, uh, if I grab, no, this is not going to survive the head on. Schanik, just give up. You're not going to survive the head on. This angry koi will. But, um, as I said, angry koi, man. Angry koi. <laughs> 
Ah, it hit an angry coin and shot it out of the sky. I, I just, I just want to take a moment here to celebrate. As uh, angry coin scores a two nil against the Schaafs, which is just very obvious. But this just shows if I made the Schaafs more maneuverable, the Schaafs would have easily won. This is basically the argument for the Mark VI Schanik, which still has a 2 km lock on range, don't ask me how, but it still has. But, and I just, <laughs> I just can't believe what just happened, because, well, um, Angry Koi got just downed, completely annihilated by a Schanik. I mean, admittedly, the Schanik was behind the Angry Koi, the Angry Koi did not very much to avoid the Schanik. But still, it, it's just, <laughs> I, I just find it very funny. And again, this proves the other point I made a little bit earlier too, which, that, which is that the Schanik most accurate weapon system is not very accurate against planes at a large distance. Sure, they are... OP at a close distance. You certainly don't want to get like within 300 meters of a Schanik, but it, it's not OP at all. If the Schanik is at a larger distance than that, it's just very clear to me. It's 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 so so clear to me. Anyway, they're engaging now. Uh, lovely vibrations in my voice when I get excited. <laughs> I certainly, um, I certainly do hope that it did not blow up your headphones when the angry Cory got shot down. <laughs> and I would, I most certainly have blown up my mic. At least uh, in the video, that won't be sounding all too well. I just want to quickly switch to the other angry coin because that's closer. Yes, indeed. Oh, it's it first wants to engage with 120s, with nines, and then 120s. That is something I have never seen before. Also, because I never do it, but um, uh, something I've never seen before. Please dodge. Yes, good schanik, good boy, good boy, good boy. Good boy Schanik. Not good boy Schanik. Bad Schanik. No, no, there goes the angry koi again. <laughs> Another angry koi down. Schanik, are you really doing this? No, 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 it's going to do this. It's going to do this. Yes, Schanik. Let's do it. Do it. End it all. End the bad. No, no, no. Don't crash. Yes, Schanik, please, please, please just do this. I want to see you do the. No, it will die now because the angry guy is going to turn around and engage. And the Schanik is not maneuverable. Ooh, the Schanik pulled a nice turn there. Uh, it's, it's, it's not good though because again, it's too much to the side of the. Of the angry koi to even make a dent. Now the angry koi is going to use a high, high dot advantage and drop down on the schanik. As Why is it not doing anything that I was calling? Seriously though, what a weird battle. Um, so, so angry koi will now take out the schanik as it, it's only predictable to. Why are they dodging each other? Well, oils, they do not want a relationship with each other. Okay, fair enough. I won't make a comment on that. Angry Koi. What are you doing? Going down like that. Um, well, it's going to engage using the Angry Koi advantage. <laughs> I'm just going to quickly call it the Angry Koi advantage. Because, well, uh, it, it dove down to the deck. And now it's going up to the Schanik. 
Schaanik is dead here, if you ask me. Fair enough though. The Schaanik didn't have enough maneuverability to survive this competition. I know that. I just wanted to enter the Schaanik simply because it's so, so damn funny of a play. And I, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to murder it. Because it's so damn funny of a play. Mm, it, it hit the roof. Yeah. So, uh, Jolly Watcher Aerospace, it's certainly been a fun battle to watch since Schaan Schaanik um, showed to be capable of things we did not expect. But you are the, the winner with 3 nil. The Schaanik wasn't was just not maneuverable enough. GG to you. If you fight the Ocon in the next round, I suspect that you won't be so lucky. Or you will, because I just jinxed the Ocon. Yeah, I probably will be so lucky because I just jinxed the Ocon. Anyway, I hoped you win. I hoped, well, I hope you enjoyed the battle. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you will watch more episodes. I um, I would be very, very sad behind this monitor if you don't. So, after the outro rolls, or during that the outro rolls, videos will appear, and please click on them. This is Bureaucratic with Voice Bob.